The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. The Masters is on. And Spieth, wow. I don't want to seem like ESPN today, but man, the guy's a robot. I, I can't believe having that kind of composure. What is he, 22, 23? An, maybe somebody can point that out to me. I'm, I'm, I was, well, still am, complete moron uh, at 23. I think, is he 23 or 22? 22. Good gracious. God, man, what was I thinking when I was 22? I was crying to my mommy. Um, tell you what, <clears throat> what we're going to talk about initially is this yen trade. I've got the S&Ps up right now. Lost chart. Let me get that back up. So let me get the yen up. Somebody took over my screen here. I'll be right back with you. Um, here's the yen. I'm going to readjust, readjust my screen here. Here we go. Got it. Okay, so obviously a lot of news out about this particular situation. 112.06, unfair lows on our weekly. This is our weekly Japanese yen, USD cross. If you're trading the futures, this is the uh, spot currency. Guys, who is messing with my charts here? Let me, let me restart my currency server here. Let me repost this. Okay. Here's our long-term weekly. There's that 112.06, 05.06 breakdown. I read something about what the uh, Japanese, uh, I guess, Bank of Japan, is BOJ, is, is saying about this. They're look, looking at it with tension, I think was the quote I heard. Here's the daily. And, you know, somebody was asking me yesterday, <clears throat> Wow, has it gone down too far? Um, you know, we don't even have any hints of new profiles attempting to appear here on this. So, you know, where's the bottom? Where do you back the truck up? Uh, I was speaking to Joey about this yesterday, and he's in Hong Kong, and he's, you know, Ed Brogan's a really good friend of ours. He was the largest hedge fund manager in Asia for about 10 straight years. Uh, he was basically, you know, a third of the Nikkei volume a lot of days, believe it or not. Uh, big trader. And, you know, Joey was talking to him and, and he was saying 105, 106 at general area. So, you know, that kind of is in the same ballpark as where this thing broke out back in. September 2014. So we had that breakout. Now, you know, we were talking religiously about playing this thing. This is actually about the time I started doing this show for TFNN about trying to buy these unfair lows around 103 or excuse me, 101, 101.33, whatever it was. Let's see, 101.33. The short term memory is not there, but the long term memory is there. So we we're talking about playing off that. It was right when I started working with TFNN back in July 2014. Tom's so difficult to work for. He's a slave driver. My life has changed significantly since that day. Just kidding. So we were talking about getting longs off of the 101.33. And, you know, initial targets, obviously, the other side of the box. When we broke out, go back and retest, this is that area unfair highs 10544 to 10614 15 so 
we were talking about, you know, there really are no clear signs about stepping in and buying this thing yet on the weekly or the daily. All right. So don't have anything to hang on to. More importantly, don't have anything to play defense against when it comes to looking at this from a, a low risk standpoint. Um, you, you do have some 240 situations going on for guys who are pretty daring. Um, you know, you can play around with these inflection points. These are all in the scanner. I'm going to pull this thing over here and go right into my Forex section. And as we look at this, if I can find it. There we go. <laughs> All right, so there's that 240 un there's that 240 sell structure there. And as we mouse over it, you know, we're seeing 107.88, 108.78, top of the box, bottom of the box. So, again, you just don't have any hints of even taking off on a long-term move, taking off any weight. So, remember, I think yesterday we were talking about the 10-year and that yellow peelback happening. It's not, a, it's not a time to reverse the trade. It's a time to take some of the weight off. I mean, if you want to get a little you know, put a little risk in your profile. Yeah. I mean, it, it could be a market turning situation. Uh, but in this case, all things considered that we just said, there's no, there's no real serious long-term intermediate term way to play defense against that trade. So therefore the long-term trade is still on. And when we look back at this, we also want to reference, this is a great little piece of education here. This is a massive hole, and what what happens a lot of times, you'll you listen to Larry and Steve and ba Basil and um, the rest of the gang, David White, Tom, they'll, they'll talk about, you know, island, um, you know, covering the gap, things like that. So in profiles, this is a similar situation. When we have a hole in the marketplace, a lot of times it'll get volatile as heck. And then it'll, a lot of times it will explore the entire hole again. So keep that in mind. One of, you know, this is where we re get real serious about looking at buying this thing, 105, 105 and a half, 106, that general neighborhood. And right now um, there's not a lot of indications that this thing is looking attractive before that. Does everybody get that? It's definitely in play. Got our 26. Uh, okay, got it. All right. So we've covered the Japanese end. We want to go back into the S&Ps for our next topic. And we've got a break coming up. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the action yesterday. We're going to talk about the breadth. We're going to talk about where the leverage is to look at the S&Ps. Stay tuned. John Logan has just announced that he is hosting a workshop Wednesday, April 20th for all TAS Profile Scanner Plus subscribers, opportunities in the current market, and strategies to profit. In this hour-long workshop, John Logan will use the TAS Profile Scanner Plus to give you a current breakdown of the sectors in the market and the opportunities that are present, as well as providing subscribers with the best strategies to trade with to profit when using this powerful piece of market scanning software. Right now, you can sign up for the TAS Profile Profile Scanner Plus at the front page of TFNN.com. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is such an amazing piece of software that we're even offering a no questions asked money back guarantee for all new paying subscribers. Don't delay as John Logan's subscriber event is coming up soon. Sign up now for the TAS Profile Scanner Plus and be up and running within minutes using this powerful piece of market scanning software. With a 30 day money back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Sign up today. 
Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Hopefully, we're going to have Steve Banger on just a little bit here. We're going to talk about something I think is very interesting. Uh, had that daily crossover uh, yesterday, finally, and uh, was showing that heaviness, the breath calculations again. Talked yesterday and the day before about this little situation outside box, unfair highs 2065, unfair lows 2018. We got as low yesterday as 2026. So, again, a little non directional at best on the breath and the internals, wider profile, talked about it just being more volatile than normal. Uh, talked about trying to get some shorts off below that 20, 46, 7, 8, 9 kind of DMZ we were looking at. A lot of things coupled into that equation, unfair highs in the previous box, 20, 47, 50. And that POC on the weekly, which was all, all important. Uh, around 2046. So what has happened is we have rallied back up into that POC. We don't know exactly where the breath calculations are going to be because a lot of these stocks haven't started printing yet. But uh, the futures right now, as you guys know, are up about 11 or 12. I don't see the breath calculations really getting too even on the short term, really getting too positive here. So the intermediate, the weekly is still strong as I don't know what. Um, and that's where we use, you know, weekly inflection points. Um, for instance, if we're coming back down into 1971 and that weekly breath is still positive, we might want to take a shot at some longs there. But right now, intermediate trade, I think that this is the situation you can play around with. You've got, you know, you come, I mean, wow, it almost is, what did we reach a high of yesterday? 2062. So, Good gracious, what a 36 point range, is that what that was? My goodness. All right, well, anyway, almost explored the entire fair auction yesterday. Didn't quite hit it to the tick on both sides, but this rally back up into this POC this morning, you know, there's, you know, fundamentally speaking, there's some probably more bearish news than, than bullish out there, in my opinion. I don't know how the futures are, are rallying as much as they are. Um, and we're going to try to grab Steve after the break. 
Let me just tell him that. Okay. Uh, let's see. That would be at... Uh, okay. Be around 8.30. Um, you know, the W World Trade Organization is, is lowering their forecasts. These guys are kind of late to the party all the time, but uh, lowering it from 3.9 3 to 2.8% forecast. So that's a pretty serious reduction. They factored a lot of things in that we already know about the China situation in the world, uh, blah, blah, blah. The, the Fed guys are speaking right now, kind of different parts of the equation. I'm not watching CNBC. I hate to watch that channel. They may be on that channel. You may benefit from listening to that, but uh, I myself have the golf channel on right now in the background. And you know what? This is a this is a terrible week to get into a bad trade. Try to avoid it. Enjoy the Masters. They've got great TV coverage. You don't want anything tampering with that scene if you're watching it. Um, what else is going on this morning? So I'm trying to I'm trying to look at you know where's the edge in trading the S and P's. Now you know there's not a there's not a huge edge. We're not bumped up into and the, you know, inflection points like we were yesterday morning, which I told you guys I thought that was a considerably decent trade to to look at getting some momentum on the short side. But now we're in the you know backing up and kind of discounting some of the things I just said, looking at it objectively relative to profiles. You know that weekly POC is very important in a wide profile. But you know we're we're kind of in a fair auction here, right in the middle. We're at the top of the mountain on the weekly at the POC, the breath, in my opinion, is heavy. So, you know, put a gun to my head. I'd like to be shorting against this general area right now and possibly looking to have this revisit 2018 down below. Sorry about that, guys. All right. So that's the situation on the S&Ps. We're going to look at the notes, and we talked about, you know, what's the easier trade out there. The easier trade, in my opinion, has been, like we talked about a lot, and I'm not going to beat this to death, is, has been to be long the notes. I mean, we had that hint of a new profile attempting to appear yesterday, and this is a really good example of what we were talking about yesterday relative to this Bloomberg. I've got this Bloomberg running on my laptop over here right now. Um, and the the profiles appearing and disappearing, that's what, you know, is a little disturbing to me. Some people like to see that. It's obviously an option in our information. But that yellow peelback disappeared. Therefore, that indication of those, the, those new profiles that you would have seen in a real-time box situation pulled, and you're going, oh, wow, thanks very much. So I like to just look at it as attempting to appear. This is why I have these settings like this. This is why the scanner, even though the notes have continued to head north, um, it was telling you in a very rote way, you know, hey, step, 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 that it's not a bad idea to take some of the longs off based on that indication alone because you may get a better chance to buy it. Some of the, you know, the core position we talked about being able to stay in, but being able to leg out of some of it, maybe catch it a little bit lower again. That didn't happen. That yellow uh, went away, and that's okay. Uh, market's up this morning. We're getting a little bit of a pullback in the 10-year. In the but, uh, again, I'm expecting the market to just kind of continue to slough off here. And you've got some 240 support around 130.27 on this. And, again, I, my theory on this is, Bonds and notes probably going to go sideways at worst. Um, market comes off. We're going to have a, another run up. So, all right. So let's take a look. Uh, I got about a minute left here. Let's take a look at a couple of the stocks in, in the news here real quick. Let's take a look at Verizon. This is the Yahoo Verizon situation. Um, printing this morning, 52.24. So here's the weekly, and Wow. This started turning yellow this week. So, again, this is 10-year, you know, not a bad idea. Verizon, not a bad idea. 
Here's the situation on Verizon now. Now you've got uh, resistance at 53. That's your selling point. This is a very powerful line here around 53, by the way. Um, you would you would sincerely hope we're trading 52.24 this morning. You would sincerely hope that we get a rally back up into that 53 area to bang it pretty hard. Um, you've got a, a good indication on the weekly, a new profile attempting to appear. You've broken down on the daily. I don't think this is a chance to buy it into 53. Don't get that excited. But, you know, let's hope it, hope it can get back to 53 to try to bang it again. All right, guys, we'll be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're looking to discover a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new Market Safe Commodity Solution CD from Everbank. This five year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to eight equally weighted commodities, including WTI crude oil, gold, silver, copper, nickel, soybeans, corn, and sugar, in one powerful CD. With annual pricing caps of 70% per component, you could earn up to 70% upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. Take advantage of this financial resource designed to grow with the times. The April 14th funding deadline is quickly approaching, so hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FD I see. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. And, um, I think we have uh, Steve Banger on with us. Steve, you there? I'm here. How are you? Great. Man. Good, man. How are you? Beautiful day here in Chicago. 37 degrees. <laughs> some more snow on the way. It doesn't get any better. Man, God. I'm so, I'm so happy I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, well, guys, Steve Banger is a really good friend of mine. Uh, we worked together when I lived in Chicago, up in the Chicago Board of Trade. And, um, and uh, Steve... Uh, Man, we've been talking about something pretty uh, pretty cool lately. I'd like I'd like I'd like to expound on it 
if you have a couple of minutes. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, no, Steve is uh, guy's been doing a lot of research on uh, this Watson IBM situation that uh, you can lease c computer space and the artificial intelligence and everything. And Steve, I, I'd love for you to just kind of hit it if you can. I mean, this is this is one of the coolest things. I've heard of to really kind of look at the markets and kind of allow that thing to kind of, you know, do its own uh, inspection, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you really think about trading in general and how it was done in the old days um, before the computer, it was a game of intuition, right? I mean, people were watching the tape and they intuitively um, started trading the tape. And some people were very successful at it and um, made a lot of money in the old days. Right. So then, then the rise of the machines came and people tried to develop what's being called rule, rules-based trading, right? So they uh -huh. used algorithms and developed um, a, mechanic, a mechanized approach, which theoretically was then a better mousetrap. But as anybody knows who has been in system development, um, it, it's very difficult to find a system which works all the time um, because of the changing market structure. And what has lately prompted my interest in that whole artificial intelligence game is that um, Google has developed an, an artificial intelligence engine which is called AlphaGo. And it, it played a game of Go against the best Go player in the world um, the beginning of March. And what, what is Go? Is it, what, what is that, by the way? Well, Go is chess on steroids, um, okay. or chess times four, basically. The number of possible movements on every single, on, on every single game is so much higher that there is no processing approach available which can calculate the number of available options and make a decision as to what is the best solution. So Go is a game of intuition from the player's perspective because the player cannot possibly calculate the odds on the next game move and neither can a computer. Mm -hmm. So what AlphaGo did is it tried to teach, or the operators of AlphaGo tried to teach AlphaGo the intuitive skills to master the game. And they succeeded so well that in a round of five games, um, the machine actually beat the best Go player in the world 4 to 1 uh, in early March. Was and that the guy from South Korea? Is that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, right. and, and that is a huge breakthrough in the artificial intelligence um, environment. Because what it does show is that you can teach the machine the intuition which is needed to approximate and then still come out ahead at the end of the day. Wow. Wow. So, in the trading arena, what what would be you know something to kind of how how do you even get started by letting or allowing that to kind of start doing some inspection? What I mean? Well, uh, any time you have a learning environment, you really have to start the basics, right? You have to teach the machine what it's supposed to do, meaning it's okay. to buy some and sell, and then it's going to take a loss or gain. And you have to explain to the machine what the purpose of its actions are, meaning to extract a maximum number of points out of given market movement at any given time. And then you give the machine a certain set of data, let's say one year's worth of data, and let the machine figure out the best way to play around to succeed in that data environment. And the machine then thinks it has it all together, and then you give the machine another year. And so now the machine has two years worth of data and all of a sudden the machine is going to realize, you know what, whatever I was doing in year one is not really working. I have to kind of like reorientate myself and figure out a better mousetrap again. So it's going to do it then for two years worth of data and um, you continue um, that game and let it learn the game and try to figure out the skills it needs to, to succeed in changing market environments. Well. What about walking forward? So you're so we're talking about kind of giving it more and more data to kind of 
do what if scenarios what walking forward um that's where i think the real benefit is right from what yes. we've okay yes yeah. so, so what so what happens there well if you, so the difference between uh, at least conceptually because obviously the, re nobody... the, re the reason I say that Steve is because a lot of people will kind of back test and optimize and then as you know a lot of times moving forward after doing that it's better to almost take the other side of the trade um, because you know some things have been curve fitted whatever so how do how does it kind of you know accomplish you know uh, not being in that scene. Well, the whole idea behind artificial intelligence is that the machine is going to recognize the change in market environment and it's going to adapt what it's doing based upon that. So there is really no no fixed rules established. Okay. So in other words, if I'm right, what the machine is going to do at the end of the day is it's going to look at the overall volatility dynamics and say at one point that a break has to be bought but with a very similar setup six months later just because the volatility environment has been changing it might actually sell the breakout and you as right. a user look at it and you're gonna say that makes no sense but the machine has come to that conclusion for whatever reason and hopefully the machine is better at doing it than the human operator right I mean that's the um, only reason why you want to have it right because it what you want it to do things which are outside of a conventional structured environment. Right, right. Yeah, so <clears throat> you've, uh, talking about that one firm in Chicago, I'm not going to name a name, but the one that you've kind of been, you know, kind of alerted us to this, sure. you and I, I mean, they've had some decent success, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, ov everybody always talks big numbers, right? right. Because uh, of course, <laughs> everybody loves to talk shop, shop basically. <laughs> but um, some people have been making, um, have been trying to make some inroads, and and I don't know of one from a particular who has apparently been very successful, successfully doing so. And if you go okay. back one step, I mean, I don't know if you remember those, but like back in the early 90s, there was a little bit of a craze with neural networks. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah. It's, a, it's I mean, actually on the, it's actually a little module on the platform that we wrote. Steve, we got to go to break. Can you hang on? And, and if, I know you're busy, but if you can, after the break, yeah. you stay on. Okay. I have a few more minutes, but then I got Yeah, yeah, go. that's it. That's all we need. Great. Right, Guys, perfect. we'll be right Thanks. back. And Matt, we will get right to you after the break. Sorry for the delay on the caller. We'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Uh, Steve, are you still with us? Yeah, I'm here. Great. <laughs> you sound excited to be with us. No, no, I am. I am. I, am. I, was, I was love to be here. Uh... Good. I love to good. Be on TV early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, we were just you know I, I just wanted to wrap it up because I know you're busy. Um, so uh, you know we're kind of alluding to a firm that was probably beating their chest a little more than they were supposed to using this technology. But you know how do you do this? Do you do you, they give you like uh, some some you know hard drive space, some allocation of memory? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know um, I, 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 I mean, as you know, John, we are we started to tinker around with it a little bit here. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. uh, without really giving the shop away, but there are a couple of, um, or there's really only one um, commercially available interface API, which allows you to uh, to write into um, an artificial intelligence uh, unit, which is a Watson, uh, IBM's Watson API. So um, you basically have to connect to Watson and you have to start um, giving it a go, start tinkering with it. Well, well, listen, uh, guys, uh, you know, if you want to explore this, go out there and just, you know, Google Watson, IBM and see what it that's all about i'm sure there's plenty of discussions in fact steve i'm seeing a lot of commercials on tv about watson lately they've started a whole new campaign about uh driving that mm -hmm. that possibility it, so uh yeah it is rather fascinating i will say that i mean it's it really is um it really opens up pandora pandora's box as to how more efficient a machine can become wow well steve thanks man and my uh, pleasure I'm sure I'll be talking to you a couple of times a day. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Looking hey. forward to it already. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Have a okay. good show. Okay. Bye-bye. And, guys, I think we have Mac from Fort Lauderdale. Mac, are you still there? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, John. Good morning. And I apologize for not getting to We had Steve scheduled. And, uh, yeah. I, that's, that's, hey, with today's technology, you, you put the phone on speakerphone, you put it in your pocket, and you walk around and do whatever you want to do. <laughs> It's great. Great, uh, man. Th thanks for doing that. Um, what's I on your mind? Mark, can I see a market profile chart on uh, on Potash, please? Yeah, let me let me see if it's in our scanner. That's the first thing I want to do. I don't know if it's in there or not. Let me just see if we can pull it up in here. There it is. Wow. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm taking Potash in the scanner first. And I'm just looking at the profiles, and I'm just looking at the cell structure. I mean, forget the chart. I, I'm showing the chart, you know, already in the den. But I'm going to pull up this scanner, and I'm going to notice that uh, we've had a little bit of bounce here in Potash recently. Um, here's the multi-level situation. So what we're doing is um, this is our 240.60. Here's our... Uh, Daily on furloughs, 1847. So there's a weekly on furlough right now at 1535, all right? And 
as you notice, I mean, we've had a you know downtrend on the short term. We're below profiles on the daily. All that being said, I'm just going to go to our e-signal chart because they're a little bit better than the charts we have in the scanner. So here's the daily. Um, if you're looking to nibble on this, is that is that what you're looking at? Or are you looking to sell this again? No, I, I uh, I'm short now. I'm okay, great. To, uh, reverse it. Okay, yeah. So what the deal is with this is. Um, you, you've actually had the first hint of a breakout. This is an interesting setup, actually. So first time, you know, we've really had a hint of any type of disturbance in the trend down, you know, last month or so. And then we've got an inside profile right now. First time we haven't had a profile leg down in our weekly in a long time. So uh, I'm looking at 1535 that you may have a nice little trading bounce there. I'm not saying it's a, you know, and that's a great area to play defense. That's always the first thing I think about is, I'm, you know, I can be wrong. And, you know, where do I say uncle? So I'm going to look at that 1535 area and look at the area below based on my appetite for risk, giving it a little bit of noise around that inflection point. The profile being an inside profile and not kind of legging down like the rest of these long-term profiles on the weekly I like this a lot, actually. 1535 was stops below, but um, it would be really, really cool when we got down there um, if we could have a new profile appear on the daily at the same time or a new hint of a profile. Start seeing that yellow in the scanner right here in this particular daily grid. Um, so I think you're on the right track here. You're looking for maybe a place to reverse it. 1535, you, you kind of got to let the market come to you on that one in my opinion and it would really be cool if we got a yellow bar attempt to appear on the daily that would give you more reasons to maybe even add to it if it starts bouncing okay yeah and and you know you're probably going to ask me where's the targets on it um no <laughs> I, well I... yeah I, I think the initial targets are 1759 but i actually think this thing could drift higher um, but that would be where you'd probably start scaling out of some of it. Okay. So, okay. Do you have time for another one? Yeah, man. Let's do it. Uh, Alibaba, B-A-B-A. -A. Let me see if that's in where this do you find Where do you find support on that with your market profile? Okay. Uh, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at Baba in the scanner here. Um, and, uh, you know, no mystery here. Let me, let me take a look at it on the uh, e-signal charts. So obviously trading above profiles in the weekly and daily has kind of ramped up here, uh, spinning around above 76.23 is long-term support right now. That's, that's a, you know, we've had a, a week this week where we've come down 76.91. It looks like the low print, so 76.23 support there. I kind of like how it's, it's moved up and is consolidating here. Um, and I like how it's trading above the dailies at the same time. So you've got you kind of got a DMZ of support between 75.72 and 76.23. So you got about three quarters of a point, kind of just collection area, if you will, in this. And uh, if you get some market help, I think this is a strong stock in a market that's, you know, kind of been spinning around up here. Uh, if you get any kind of market help on the north side, this thing should go. But it might not be a bad stock to play defense in um, being long if the market turns south because it does look relatively attractive. Okay. I mean, all this is in the scanner. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, my, my general feelings on the broad stock market are they're going to they're, they're gonna spin around sideways or trail off, but, and I hate to kind of play every side of the coin here at this in one conversation, but what Tom has been saying recently, we could get that kind of spike up and run some people out before we start moving down. I mean, I'm looking at the breath figures. I mean, the weekly is still very positive on our breath calculations of the S&P, but we've got, you know, we've got some kind of mixed bag here right now, and I think we're we're kind of in store for a little bit of a range sideways at best. So. You know, Baba, that general area is going to, where you're going to be where you're going to want to play defense on if you're going to want to be long. Are you, are you looking at it as a possible short? No, I wanted to go long. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you're looking at it correctly. But uh, I'd love to, you know, I'd, I'd like the market to give you some help. I don't know if it's going to give you a ton of help right now. So, Okay. 
We'll Thank back you. Next, Thanks for nice. calling in, man. Okay. Yep. We'll be right back, guys. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see, next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. we got about four minutes left. And uh, thank you, Mac, for calling in from Fort Lauderdale. Those are great questions, and I, I think it's, it's good for everybody to be able to kind of hear the logical thought process through those types of things. And Steve Banger, uh, just, man, awesome to always be able to talk to him. Um, we're taking a look at, by the way, um, if you guys haven't seen it on the homepage of the TFNN, and TFNN's website, I like how they've, you know, a lot of times these companies will, will make kind of mo you know make them make their sites uh mobile friendly and all that and it seems like it's a lot of wasted real estate there's a ton of stuff on the tfnn site and you can get to a lot of it on the home page really easily um and you know one of the things they've got up there right now is a webinar i'm doing on april 20th around 5 30 i believe so uh Make sure you take a look at that. We're going to go over some very specific strategies after finding those opportunities to enact those strategies all from within the scanner. And, uh, you know, I think you're going to enjoy it. It's kind of a little bit, little bit deeper level 
of uh, what we've done before, kind of pointing out some of the you know basic mechanisms of the scanner and how to find some opportunities. We're going to talk about how do you you know what what type of trades do you put on relative to those opportunities. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and we're going to take a look at a couple other stocks here before we get off the show today. Uh, Mr. Softy, as we used to call it. And Jay, you're reminding me, when you said that in the den earlier, you're reminding me of the first trade that I did. I walked into a Merrill Lynch office when I was 15. They told me to go back and get my mommy and bring her back. Um, every dime I had, put it on uh, RJR, Nabisco, when they took it over. Um, and that's when it all started. Come on, e-signal. Okay, here we go. So Microsoft had a couple of emails about this one, a little bit of news on this one, a uh, little bit of a pop. They're not going to end up spending all the money they thought they were going to spend. Uh, 54.86, so getting a little bit of a pop this morning. And I'm having trouble. Okay, here we go. So, you know, a stock that's, in my opinion, compressing up into these weekly unfair highs, I'm not super excited about it right now from the long side because I'm not exactly that bullish on the market in general. But as we look at the daily, um, <clears throat> you know, you have a profile that continues to edge higher. But again, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of shorting it and I'm not a big fan of going long right now. And I've got to do this for Tom before we end the show, if he can see this. The bear claws are out. My name's on it. And here we go. I'm going to send this to Tom. If you guys can see that, I just had to show it. It's going to sit right there. That's where we're at. We're going to move this right over here. The bull. There's the bear. I'm a little bit more bearish on the market right now, so I'm kind of laying off the longs. There are some long opportunities out there, but uh, that's my take on it. We're going to probably spin around sideways at best. Here we go. Yeah, I only held RJR for like six months. It was like 80 or 79, maybe 80, 78. I can't remember. Um, all right. So as we look at this and we look at the scanner, I'm going to go back to the indices grid just to kind of wrap up. We got about 15 seconds. If you'll notice on our intermediate, we're a little red here, folks. Just remember that the globe is kind of heavy right now. And uh, I'm looking for some shorting opportunities when they're presented to their self on the S&Ps. Thanks, guys. You've been great. Stay tuned. Larry's next. You will thoroughly enjoy him. Have a good weekend. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.